Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video slash unboxing. This is gonna be a bit unusual because I usually get about two weeks to spend with a sample watch before I have to ship it to the next reviewer or send it back. With Fortelier watches, they informed me that they would like me to record a watch within four days. Like that wasn't enough, the package actually got lost, or should I say sent to another city on the other side of my country because somebody input a wrong address. Then the delivery guy called me and I realized by his accent that he's not from my area. He explained to me where the package is. I explained him where it has to be. So I had to, I lost another day or two before the package arrived to me. So once it arrived, I actually opened it, checked out the watch, checked out the specs and just decided to record this like an unboxing and tell you my impressions of the watch within one or two days because like I said sadly I have to send it back because of this I'll probably include a couple of macro shots that I managed to snag before I send the watch and I'm going to incorporate them into this video so there's not going to be a detailed review because simply there's no enough, not enough time so like I said this is the Fortelier watches this is their first model it's called the Cambrian by the Cambrian peri period of the planet earth so it comes in this nice leather pouch inside you get a leather strap a rubber strap you get a set of tools and you got to get the watch itself on a metal bracelet and here's the watch now this watch to me looks like a tudor pelagos when it comes to the case shape the finish even the bezel execution the bezel insert but the dial is less complicated it's simpler it's more like a black bay uh, I mean like a Tudor Black Bay but without the the line running across but overall it is a nice looking watch it's just a bit generic I do like the case because like I said they copied the Tudor's bracelet the case the case finish so you have an all brushed case on the sides on the tops with this bevel running to the side you have a nicely signed crown a screw in crown as the watch is 300 meter water resistant you get a ceramic bezel insert and it's nice because it's cut I mean the numerals are cut just like on a Rolex and on a Tudor and inside you have the Swiss uh, C1 and C3 Luminova this one this is the C1 which is why it's white the hands are a bit generic but at least they're not a direct copy of the Tudor model and since the watch is powered by the Seiko NH35 you do get the date which in this case they placed at six o'clock which is something I like because it keeps the symmetry of the dial and I'm also happy they kept the white uh, date disc instead of black when you get a black dial usually watch people are gonna say you should have a black date disc but on this as you can see the date actually mimics the uh, markers that are at three at nine so the six o'clock marker actually looks better in white than if it would than if it was black and the dial is matte black the bezel is matte black so it gives a bit of, a bit of a toolish look while the markers and hands are all polished like I said the watch is overall nice the bracelet is of excellent quality so you get solid links and links and a milled out clasp and I love that it tapers from 20 all the way to 16 millimeters which means that it should be very comfortable on wrist something I won't find out because like I said I simply don't have any time let's open the clasp to see so you have a safety lock and then it's a simple friction at least it seems like a simple friction clasp which doesn't want to open ah there we go so you have to force it a bit uh, to open it as you can see and I really like the case back this is that trilobite or whatever they call it that most famous fossil of that era and it's really well executed like I said I will input some of these macro shots so maybe you'll see the details better let's try to clasp okay I was just opening it wrong but I wish it was a push button release instead of this because this you really have to push hard let's try the bezel it's a 120 click bezel and it's on the soft side meaning that it's pretty smooth to turn it doesn't have a lot of resistance but the clicks are nice I wish it was a bit tighter but then again this is a pre-production model that gets sent to people so maybe in production models the feel is going to be different the crown does have a nice feel you can wind it you can hack the seconds and it has a quick set date and its screw is in pretty nice 
So, Seiko NH35 Sapphire Crystal with anti-reflective coating. I hope on the inside only. Ceramic bezel, an excellent bracelet and a pretty well finished case. And all that is coming at 169 uh, euros, which is around $200, maybe slightly less than $200, which to me seems like a pretty good deal when you look at the watch spec-wise. And overall, like style-wise, it's a pretty timeless design. It's, it's classic, but I wish they used more originality because as you can see, even the end links, everything is pretty much the copy of the Tudor. And although the Tudor is a very nice watch and I like the look of it, I wish they went with, with some originality. But if you like a Tudor and you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can get this. Look, the finish is really, really good. Now let's try to do a loom Oh, I forgot the dimensions. This is a 40 millimeter watch, or should I say the case is 39 point something, while the bezel is 40.1. So you can see it as a 40 millimeter watch with a 47 millimeter lug to lug, making it pretty much perfect for any size wrist. So I will put it on my wrist although I didn't size the bracelet, and we'll do a loom shot and call it a day. Like I said, I wish I had more time to spend with the watch because it does look interesting in a way and it seems like it's finished pretty well, but I'll put in macro shots and you can be the judge yourself. Let's charge the loom and see what happens when we turn off the light. Okay, let's get the camera to focus. Switch to manual focus and turn off the light if I can reach the button like so and as you can see it glows blue which is pretty good and actually the loom is pretty good as you can see all the markings on the bezel are also loomed and I believe this is then the BG9 or something like that when it comes to loom because it glows blue but it's white in appearance, so it doesn't have any green tint or yellow tint or anything like that. There are going to be a couple of dial variants. And that's pretty much it. So let's zoom out, put it on my wrist and see what's what. But like I said, with these dimensions and the bracelet is pretty long because I can put it without opening the clasp. So let's zoom out a bit more. And this is on my 6.7 inch wrist. As you can see, the proportions are pretty perfect. The thickness is 13 point something without the logo on the case back. And if you include the logo, it's 14.1, which is a bit thick, but it actually looks nice because it makes the watch look a bit more massive and it's not ridiculously thick. And I really do like this style of a bezel. And that's pretty much it. So, like I said, I wish I had more time, but what can you do? You can't get them all at your own leisure. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.